how much has changed in terms of people's awareness and confidence to talk about their mental health issues. Years ago when I was a player or first started on this journey, never spoken about, not one bit, not even thought about, you know, as a manager that somebody could be struggling for whatever reason, just never ever entered the equation. As a manager mm -hmm. operating at the highest level in the women's game in this country, how do you unwind? I know how to relax away from it. I recognise it, it, it's a fantastic job, but it is just a job that, that I do. And I also recognise that it's important to get away from it and do other things, which I do. I find it quite easy, actually. And always have, to be fair, because it's not... It's important to me in the moment, but, you know, there are other things that are more important to me in that moment. So I choose those moments when I'm away from football to make you know football secondary and everything else is a priority. How do you cope with the, the, the highs of winning and the lows of losing? Winning on a Sunday, you come in on a Monday, it's the, the environment is very different. You lose on a Sunday, you come in on a Monday, again it's very different. I think you, you, when you lose you manage it, I, I'm not happy losing, I don't like it, I want to win but then I have to park it. I learn from it, take from it, and then we go again. And I think that's really important for, for you know, your well-being. You, I have to release it at some point. It doesn't mean to say that I don't, you know, have a moment, you know, oh, we could have done better, da, 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 da. But there is a point where I have to let it go. Do you have any coping mechanisms for the disappointment or criticism that may come your way? I have to let it out. I let it out and then I try and park it, if that, that's my coping mechanism. Um, and, and, you know, talking it through is just, you know, simple things. I talk it through, I rent, I get it out of my system. And then before you know it, you've got to very quickly, when it's domestic football, and people say this, the beauty about it is there is another, very quickly there's another game. So very quickly your mindset has to shift and, and if you dwell on that, you can't focus on the next game. And when it's high, when you win, I try and keep that feeling because it's quite nice. So it's like, Ugh. The women's game has been developing for a number of years now and is in a really exciting place. But with the development, with the money investment, with the media, mm. more fans, mm. that brings more pressure. Mm -hmm. How much does that change the dynamic of, of what you do? I, I, I try to take it in my stride and go, this is the reality of this world is that, you know, and we've seen it more and more in the women's game that, that managers and coaches are being fired, um, which isn't nice for anybody. I've experienced that, but that is the reality. And with that, you know, you get the, comes the pressure, comes the expectation, comes the disappointment. I, I think it, you've got to really learn to manage yourself in all of that. And that isn't easy, but that tends to come with experience. How do the pressures change from being manager of a national side, as you have been, to managing a club side? Every week in, in domestic programme, every week is a game. Every week is there's pressure to be successful. Whereas internationally, that pressure is maybe once a month. The biggest pressure internationally is in a tournament. So it, there is absolute pressure in both. It's just at different times. When I came into domestic football, it was like, I felt like I was in a constant tournament because there's a game every week. And it was like, wow, there was no respite. Internationally, you play a game a month, you deal with that pressure, you've got three weeks to decompress. From those early days when you walked into the dressing room as a, as a manager to now, how much has changed in terms of people's awareness? It's night and day. It was never spoken about, even when I was a player. It, mental health, what, what do you mean? But now it is very open. I think, think what's really great about the game now that you have well-being staff that, that look after both players and staff mental health. You have, mental well-being days, you, they, everybody really takes notice of it and values the importance of everybody's health. So I, I can't actually recall what the turning point was and when the turning point was, but it's 
to a point now where people, players, staff are quite comfortable and saying, look, I'm having a bit of a bad time. I need some support, I need some help. And nobody's looked at strangely for admitting something like that, which could be very personal, but everybody's quite comfortable to do that. And I think that's a testimony to, to where the game's at now.